Friends, there are a variety of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a Spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ, individually members of it. We are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism, marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of the Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling, as teaching elders, assuring that God's ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion, ordering the governance of the church and preaching the word and administering the sacraments, representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of First Presbyterian Church, now ordains and installs Robert Atnip, Tom Perkins, Clint Wachi, and Mary Wiley to the roles of ruling elder, and Chris Batlock, Morgan Heiser, and April and Steve Mick to the role of deacon. Ordination calls the whole church to be renewed, commit, committed, and reminds us to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Therefore, before we ask the constitutional questions of ordination, I invite you to reaffirm your baptismal vows uh, as we reaffirm that sense of our own belovedness. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from ways of sin, renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior, and trust in his grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? With God's help, will you? And now I give you the constitutional questions written in run-on sentences for your great pleasure. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? I do and I will. Nailed it. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ and the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity and abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's Word and Spirit? Will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? even after being asked eight other questions. Will you? I'm oh, sorry. Okay, this question is just for the ruling elders. Will you be a faithful ruling elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in the government and discipline, serving in councils of the church and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And for the deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? 
And now the questions for the congregation. Do we, the members of the Church, accept Robert, Tom, Clint, and Mary to the office of elder, and Christ, Morgan, April, and Steve to the office of deacon, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? Do we? Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions, to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the Church? Do we? It just occurs to me there should be a parental version of this, like, kids, do you agree to abide by your parents' decisions and follow them? Okay, there isn't one of those. At this time, I would like you, as you are able, to turn and kneel on the first step, and everyone who is ordained and would like to try to make their way forward, come forward to do a laying on of hands. In this, we recognize the movement of the Spirit down through the generations. It is our own witness to the apostolic succession. Friends, please join me in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you call forth leaders to serve you, and you equip them with your gifts. Among your people, Israel, you anointed prophets, priests, and rulers. You called pastors and teachers, bishops and elders, deacons to build up your church. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people, ministering in the power of your spirit. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for all in need and guarded the peace of the community. In the church, deacons, elders, and pastors served together so that your whole people might be equipped for ministry and built up into the full unity of Christ. For your servants in every age, O God, in the church of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise. Gracious God, in the waters of baptism, you claim us as your own. You call us to share in Christ's ministry. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us now that we may discern the gifts you have given and call them forth from one another, and that together we might use these gifts for the good of all. In obedience to Christ and in the unity of Christ's Spirit, may we proclaim good news, make disciples, be light and leaven, share our bread, offer a cup of cold water, wash one another's feet. Make us strong, and in particular, make these your children, who we ordain and install this day to the office of elder and deacon, strong in Christ, that we might see in them the mirror of your love, that they might live as your people and show forth your saving love to the world, that we might walk in righteousness humbly before you and the world by the power of your Holy Spirit. This day, O oh God, we ask that you do this once again. Amen. Friends, Robert, Tom, Clint, and Mary are now ruling elders of the Presbyterian Church. Chris, Megan, April, and Steve are deacons in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry that your whole life bear and witness the crucified and risen Christ to us and to the world. Amen. <laughs>